Happy Facebook Live Wednesday. It's my 97th consecutive week. And today's topic is one that I do not in any way, shape, or form, um, you know, feel that I am an expert in this particular area because I think as any parent, we all have this challenge of getting our kids to listen, right? No matter how old your child is, or maybe you have grandchildren, and it is something that can cause frustration, tears, um, hopelessness, and sometimes you just wonder why. I had a mom say, why did I even want to become a parent? You know, why am I just, they're just causing me so much stress. And then I bumped into um, someone yesterday on my walk with the dogs, and she has a four-year-old. Um, her other three children, she says, are angels. They're, you know, um, I think it's in their 20s all the way down to the four-year-old. Her teenager is fine. Her nine-year-old is just super complacent and cooperative. But this four-year-old challenges her authority every single moment and wants to do everything his way. And so I decided to read up on it because I know, you know, what... Um, experts say, you know, who study child behavior and they're child therapists or they um, help you, you know, have your kids um, listen to you. And so all kids, though, I want to start off with, we all know that they are hardwired for power. I mean, they, you know, sometimes feel like they have no control. They feel like, you know, I always have to listen. You're always so bossy and I never get to do anything that I want, which is a little melodramatic. And then we, of course, feel that, oh my gosh, can you just not listen to one thing that I ask you to do? And in the past, they, they must have listened a few times, you know, even though, even though you feel that the majority of the time they butt heads with you and they just refuse to um, grant your most, you know, mildest request. So I came up with, I mean, there are so many top three ways to get your children to listen to you, top seven ways. And I thought, you know, I want to do, um, you know, I don't want to bore you folks with such a long list of suggestions. But the one thing that I know my friend and soul sister Deslin always reminds me is shorten my speech because I intend to make it short and then I go on and on and on because once that anger or frustration takes over, you just can't stop or at least I can't stop, right? Because the anger or the just emotional vomit, you can say, just comes out of you and you don't know how to stop it because you're on a roll. And, um, you know, you want your child so much to just comply, just to, can you just do this for me since I do so much for you, which actually is like shaming and you think it's negotiating, but you're actually um, trying to bribe them, right? Which could be considered incentives and proper incentives really help. But if we shorten our speech, and we do away with the don't. So what I mean is, you know, instead of saying, don't run in the hallway, don't, um, and I've been doing this with my five-year-olds, instead, instead of saying, don't get distracted, I turn it around and I tell them what behaviors I expect. So if they're all over the place, I'm like, can we, um, are you ready to focus? Or I just say, are you focusing right now? And it takes a lot of patience to just, slow down your speech which you all know for me I talk a mile a minute and the tone and even hey Bertha the tone that you use and even the the volume that you use I've been known to even when I I don't I'm not even yelling they're like mom you don't have to yell but I naturally have a loud voice a fast voice um you know I might be ending up in a whirlwind of life lessons all because like the dishes aren't washed or you know something wasn't done so when i slow down i've been practicing this and it works i slow down my speech 
I speak softer when that your child is yelling, even if it's an adult, if you find someone speaking softly, you automatically tend to, you know, you need to first listen because you have no idea, right? Your first thought is, wait, what? And then if you're irritated, you know, right? You might say, what? So your child, you know, your teen says, what? And you say, I just want you to, and you speak softly. You don't say, don't disrespect me, right? Maybe that's a, that's a common thing. Don't disrespect me. You are using a tone of voice that is totally inappropriate, but look at what we're doing. So that one of the rules was the golden rule, right? And so you treat your kids with respect if you want respect. Keeping your cool while maintaining your authority is really tough. But if we come with, you know, come towards them with a genuine kind tone, it is difficult for them. They might still shut down. They might be grumpy. And I've said this, you know, with students, I'm like, well, it doesn't look like you're in a good mood. I know that you don't want to do this homework. I am not here to, you know, scold you. And I think that's, you know, I mean, you really have to defuse that anger first, right? Whether it's a significant other, when you think about it, anger is anger, whether it's toward a child, a boss, a coworker, a friend, um, significant other, right? Parent. And so when you take away that hat where you think, you know what, I am the parent and they need to listen to me because in order to get my respect, you need to respect me. Well, when you're dealing with someone who wants to get control, they know as a oppositional defiant teenager who is already going through that, you know, that growing stage where they're they're learning to assert their independence and assert their power. Like, you know what? I don't care what you say. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm cutting school or I'm not doing my homework. Try and stop me. And it really is baiting you, right? And so you need to take that deep breath or sometimes you could just say, you know what, both of us are heated right now. Let's take a time out from each other. And can we just agree to meet in an hour? Or can we just, you know, curb the conversation topic, topic because we are both obviously very, very like emotionally up there, right? And they might just say, whatever, but you've diffused it. You walk away. You take time for major self-care. And um, sometimes I do 10-minute and positive energy meditation. Or I found one, you know, like um, how to deal with anger meditation. And it really is deep breathing and having a healthy perspective. Because if you go through, and I share this on, um, I think, my Instagram, uh, you know, eight ways to just deal with and sit with uncomfortable emotions. And a lot of us don't want to be angry. A lot of us don't want to be depressed or sad. And what I'm teaching kids is it's okay to be upset. You know, you still have to do the work that I tell you, but you can hate every minute of it. Once you give kids permission to own their emotions, and it's okay, but you know, your message also is to do it with respect and just say, I know that you're really upset with me. Hey, it's my friend, Deslin. I just shared how um, your uh, powerful lesson to me was shorten my speech. And that is something that I struggle with, ask Deslin, every single day. So like I said, I'm not telling you that I've mastered this. I think getting your child to listen to you is tough. I'm not telling you that, you know, you're going to just, oh, yeah, just follow these five rules or seven rules and I'm going to listen to you. Not at all. So what I'm asking you, yeah, Dustin said it's okay. It's perfectly okay for your kids to be disrespectful sometimes. And you're thinking, what? I forbid that to happen in my household, right? Because many of us, well, I, don't, I was spanked with a, a, a wooden ruler, a Japanese yardstick, but we were always taught, you better respect me. You better not. And it really stifles your voice and you grow up thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't say that because it's disrespectful. Sometimes we end up allowing other people to walk over us. We don't want anyone, anyone to get upset. So what my 
mission is, is to help parents, right? You wanna reduce stress, how to reduce stress, learn how to communicate effectively. What does that even mean? Well, when you um, speak at their eye level and Prince William shared this, said, you know, whenever he talks to his daughter, you know, Charlotte or, you know, his son, he, he really goes down, I mean, you know, at his, at their eye level, maybe he has to go down to his knees, maybe, you know, but a lot of you probably have teenagers or kids taller than you, but really give them eye contact, not that, you know, I can't stand you eye contact, but show them that you genuinely want to hear them and you're not here to rip their head off because I've been working with children for gosh, 28 years. I can't believe it's been that long. And every one of them, you know, tell me that they cannot take when their parents are disappointed in them, but they also say, my parents don't even listen anyway. So why should I even talk to them? And I thought, wow, I've been doing so many topics, you know, thinking, what should I do? And it truly is how to get not only kids to listen to you, but how do you listen to your child? Because once you master listening to your child, guess what? They will listen to you. They will share more and you're going to, you know, just really crack down, break down that wall of resentment. Some of our kids are filled with um, hatred. And a lot of these kids are like, I cannot stand my mom or my dad's like controlling issues. They don't know how to just trust me or believe in me. And a lot of parents say, yeah, because you lie to me all the time, you know, which could be true. But I was talking to a good friend of mine and she thinks lying is not the, the worst thing to do. And I said, what? Because that was my rule, do not lie. And she said, she lied many, many times because fear. If she did not listen, she would get emotionally, physically, and mentally abused. It was just the worst abuse possible. So she says she has re, just, you know, reflected on what lying is. And lying doesn't mean that you're bad, you're immoral, that you're, you know, you're destined to be a criminal who will, you know, cheat on your taxes and cheat, period. It just means that you're operating from a place of fear. And if you're scared of the consequences of revealing the truth, then you will lie. So a lot of kids take a long time maybe to come out and tell their parents that, you know, they're transgender or they're gay or, you know, they just, you know, want to change religions maybe. Maybe their whole family is Christian and they want to become a Buddhist or they don't want to share that they failed a test because their phone will be taken away. So this is where I know it's going to cause a lot of people who, um, you know, and I'm not here to get people's um, agreement. I'm just here to offer um, just thought-provoking topics and questions, but that mutual respect, every single website that I checked, you know, all this, these, these psychologists, behavioral experts, everything was mutual respect is the foundation of any relationship, right? Friendship, romantic relationship, siblings, and the parent-child relationship. If there is no mutual respect, you will not be able to get your child to listen to anything that you say. You might even say something um, nice or, you know, say, hey, good morning. And get those rolled eyes or like, don't even talk to me. You know, that, that look. Sometimes it doesn't have to be words, right? You can just feel that energy where, oh my gosh, why am I hated? What did I do to you? And it's because of years of them not feeling heard not feeling understood, feeling majorly judged. And we don't mean that. I mean, I'm learning a lot. My girls have been very vulnerable and sharing what I've done in the past, which half of the things I, I never intended to um, cause them to, you know, have limiting beliefs or maybe, you know, have a little resentment towards me. And um, I did things as a mom because I wanted to organize our family life or I just, you know, felt like I needed to lecture because that's what what happened to me right and I wanted to give consequences without realizing sometimes it's just a quick thing where you say you know what um, you broke a rule but you make the rules known beforehand if the video games are not stopped by 8 p.m. you'll be losing one hour of video game privileges tomorrow but you don't say you know three weeks I've done that keep it up 
one week, right? When it started off with 24 hours, which I've been told by the psychologist that I um, met with, don't do the two week thing because after a while your child will get used to not having that privilege and they're not even gonna care, which I found was true because I got up to a month and, they, and then I saw them exit. I'm like, okay, three weeks left, two weeks left, 40 hours, 48 hours left. And you know, what is that? Is it because you are super upset that you were like, you know what, I'm gonna make your life a living hell because you're making my life miserable, right? So I'm, I'm going all over the place, but let me just repeat the mutual respect, so important. Yes, they will listen to you if you threaten them, which is why a lot of parents say, the beatings work, the um, harsh punishments work. But at what cost? The cost is the emotional connection. You jeopardize your relationship. Resentments form. And I've had um, experiences where kids, as they become adults, just no longer want to spend time. They refuse to spend holidays with you or they refuse to even keep in touch with you. There's basically no communication. I know someone whose um, son changed his last name to his wife's because he did not want to be associated with the dad. I mean, that's like the far, I mean, I've, I've never, that's really, really um, a harsh consequence of destroying the emotional connection of a relationship. But I think all of us parents, we want our children to, you know, continue to have a healthy relationship with us. But that mutual respect, avoid yelling, which I am working on, it has to be a respectful interaction. No one wants to feel dominated, right? No one wants to feel less valued because of the tone you use, if you speak condescendingly, if you accuse, if you, you know, say, and how many times do I have to tell you? Or do I have to remind you one more time? Are you ever going to even listen to me? <laughs> and I've been guilty of telling my husband one day, I know it's been 25 years, one day I know you'll listen to me. What does that do to a relationship? So I, I've been doing major apologizing. And my daughters, um, a few, I think it was last year, a few months ago, said, you know, mom, you would have raised us totally different had you been a parent coach, right? And I said, yeah, I am sorry. I made all these mistakes with you. But you know what? Now I can share all the mistakes that I've made that I continue to make because it's such a passion of mine to help parents um, navigate this roller coaster journey which sometimes feels like you are burning in um i don't know the worst hell mental hell possible because the pain is real you know when you have an argument with your son or your daughter or they're really upset with you and you think i've done everything what's going on so the golden rule avoid yelling mutual respect ensure how's this one ensure that your words have consequences. So not just like lecture, 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 what you're doing wrong, but respect is developed. If you're going to say, you know, do something, follow through. And I did, that's the one thing I did. If you guys argue one more time, we are not going to the beach. And um, they had to, they argued, had to take all the beach stuff out of the car. They were upset at each other. And, you know, I was looking forward to the beach too, but I thought, no, when I say a consequence will be given, carry it out, which is why the biggest thing we do, right, is the big threats. The big flashing red lights is avoid big threats. Most parents keep repeating the threats without actually following through, right? So the best thing is like timeouts, even if you're a teenager, right, that the timeout could be, you know what, um, I know you usually play video games after you're doing your homework, but today um, I'm going to cut your video game time to, I don't know, take away an hour. An hour is a long time. Um, if it's really severe, just say, uh, you know, and make it a rule though. The next time you're really disrespectful, I really need you to understand the importance of following these house rules and you will not be playing video games for 24 hours, which is like a lifetime for kids. And they'll think about it. I've had my um, daughter negotiate, well, what if I do this? What if I do that? No, nope. I'm standing you know, really firm on this one, and they're huff and puff, but guess what? It, it does, you know, you if you have a very strong 
opposition with defiant child this will not work right away but i had dr tolly um Amoxipolis on my parents summit and he said these kind of you know when you drastically change the way you behave to instill uh you know better behavior it's going to take time because first of all your kid's going to be like what's going on with mom she normally like yells and rants and raves why is she speaking in a soft voice and pretending is she pretending to respect me so that kind of thing is you know you just have to keep showing that you know i am making it and if, if you can even admit I know I might look like I'm some like from outer space because I am trying to change my default. Um, call me on it. Call me on it if I do yell at you because I, I want to make a conscious effort to become a better parent. And you know what? I, I've been thanking my daughter like, you know, mom, you're not letting go. And I just say, thank you for letting me know. Yeah, I need that reminder. Um, I thought you're not going to lecture. You know what? I'm so glad you reminded me. And it takes a huge effort to set your ego aside and just say, you know what, how important is it for me to build a healthy relationship with my kids, no matter how old they are? Because I've had families who, you know, never talked to each other for years. And then all of a sudden, the adult son in their late 20s comes around. And it, you know, they might not stay long enough, but just seeing that those, those many moments of hope where peace is possible, but just give your full attention, you know, put your phone away, um, eye contact, face to face, really listen, practice reflective listening, right? Which is just kind of repeating, not robotic, but okay, so I understand, you know, you're upset at me because I'm too controlling, I'm not uh, letting you trust your journey, um, and you're right. I guess I'm allowing your, your lies to you know, prevent me from trusting you, but I get it. I know that you felt the need to lie. So let's start over and practice, you know, just I want to practice healthier ways so that we can have a mutual respect and we can have, I was, used to tell my um, girls, we might have to have like a thousand fresh starts before noon. You know, it's like, okay, fresh start, fresh start, because sometimes you think it's 8 a.m. And I used to think, and I just ruined the day, you know, so I'm here to remind you that it doesn't matter how many fresh starts it takes, but if you really crave and desire just having your children listen to you, just practice one of these tips. Maybe today you avoid yelling and every time you wanna yell, you just think, you know what, um, I need to need a little time out. And then you blast your favorite song in your bedroom or you, you know, dance for 30 seconds, watch a funny TikTok. It's amazing. I could be in a mood of intense anger or deep depression and calling a friend. You know, I, I call Deslin and within what, 30 seconds to a minute, I'm laughing. Laughter truly is, uh, you know, the most wonderful cure to anger, to resentment. And if you get your kids to laugh, that is pure gold. And sometimes when you're in that um, moment of tension, right, whether you can either have the argument escalate or you can kind of diffuse it. Just say, you know what? You're right, man. I must be really hard to live with because I wouldn't want to live with, you know, a parent who's like me. Boy, you must have such a hard life living with me. I am so sorry. And look them in the eye. They'll probably be like, what? You know? But that's just me um, sharing, you know, how to get kids to listen to you. If you find a way that works, or if you feel just so exasperated that you think nothing works, don't give up hope. You know, um, join Deslin, and um, I have this private Facebook group called um, Tranquility. Um, it's Deslin, can you? <laughs> I just went blank on our Facebook group. But it is a, we play small as we get older, yes. Um, but we do have, just message us and we will, we encourage you to join our um, tranquility group. It is, um, you know, healing um, with aloha, tranquility tips. And it's a group where we heal with aloha by letting go with aloha. And we are so passionate about helping you folks access tranquility in the midst of emotional chaos. Hey, Patty, thanks for joining. 
Um, yeah, so that's it from my 97th Facebook Live. I am looking for a special guest, hint, hint, anybody there, for my 100th Facebook Live Wednesday. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. It's in three weeks, and I would love, love to have someone there to keep me company. Um, so, hope you have a wonderful Wednesday, no matter what you do. Surrender, let go, access tranquility. Yes, Destiny reminded me, it is called Healing by Letting Go with Aloha. Tranquility tips, you guys, and we are going to um, continue with our mission. Yes, Sandy, Sandy Davies, you guys got to follow her. She's from Australia, invented an amazing uh, cream called Happy Paws. Look her up on Instagram, Happy Paws. And with that, I bid you a fond aloha. Oh my gosh, it's Fran, Fran Farmer Franny, um, amazing farm that my uh, husband and my daughter visited in December. But thank you guys. I really appreciate all the support. I appreciate even um, the comments that um, might have triggered me. But you know what? I am here to just share, to learn, to care. And I want to uh, apologize to anyone that, you know, if I offend someone or if I seem to be, tar I don't target anyone. I just share. And anyone who knows me, I just sometimes don't think before I speak. But my heart and my soul, my purpose is always genuine. So thanks for watching, guys. And I look forward to sharing more. See you next Wednesday for my 98th Facebook Live. Bye.